Indigenous issues are more prominent on the international ed agenda than ever before. It is time that we recognize your history and that we protect your indigenous lands. Acknowledging that history is written by victors and conquerors, more and more emphasis is now being placed on looking at history through the eyes of those who were conquered, oppressed, and displaced. The Indigenous Peoples. This is one of those stories. Our story takes place on a small piece of land located at the crossroads of Europe, Africa, and Asia, and begins at the dawn of the Iron Age. Between the 11th and 9th centuries BCE, the 12 Israelite tribes united to create the ancient Kingdom of Israel. Once unified, they built the first temple in Jerusalem. Eventually, the kingdom split into two. The tribes of Benjamin and Judah formed the Kingdom of Judea, while the remaining 10 northern tribes kept the name Israel. In an age of great empires, the two kingdoms were eventually conquered by powerful forces. First, the Assyrian king Saragon conquered the Kingdom of Israel, expelled most of the ten Israelite tribes, and forcefully resettled other subjugated peoples onto Israelite land. I repopulated Samaria more than before. I brought into it people from countries conquered by my hands. The ten northern Israelite tribes were exiled and disappeared from history. Today, different communities around the world practicing ancient Jewish rituals claim to be descendants of these ten lost tribes of Israel. As the majority of Israelites were lost, only the Judeans remained. Their name became the name of a people. But Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar II conquered Judea, destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, and sent most of the Jews into exile. It seemed like the disappearance of the Jews was complete. In the ancient history of the Middle East, this fate was shared by many indigenous peoples. The Canaanites assimilated into surrounding cultures, and the Philistines were exiled by the Babylonians and disappeared from history. But the Babylonian Empire was defeated by the Persians, and King Cyrus the Great announced he would allow indigenous peoples in his empire to return to their lands. And so, 58 years after the destruction of the first temple in Jerusalem, the Judeans, or the Jews, returned to their land and built the second temple. Greek rule began after Alexander the Great defeated the Persians. It was a time of growth in the Jewish population. But the Greeks' attempt to globalize the ancient world in their likeness, called Hellenization, presented the Jews with a challenge. Many were attracted to Hellenism, while many others resisted the loss of their indigenous identity. The Greek attitude of peaceful Hellenization changed drastically when Antiochus Epiphanes outlawed Judaism and forced the worship of Zeus. The Jews resisted, and the furious Antiochus sent his army to Jerusalem. He ordered his soldiers to cut down without mercy those whom they met, and to slay those who took refuge in their houses. There was a massacre of young and old, a killing of women and children. The Jews in the countryside were enraged by the atrocities committed by Antiochus in Jerusalem. A few years later, as Antiochus was preoccupied with the military challenge elsewhere, the Jews revolted, and in 140 BCE, regained their independence. This successful indigenous uprising is celebrated to this day, during the holiday of Hanukkah. But less than 80 years later, the Jews lost their independence once again to another mighty imperial power, the Romans. Roman rule over Judea was a time of turmoil. Beginning in 37 CE, numerous Jewish uprisings broke out, until finally, the Great Jewish Revolt erupted. Initially, the Jewish rebels defeated the Roman legions and established an independent government in Jerusalem. Their success presented a serious threat to an empire faced with other indigenous rebellions. And so, celebrated General Vespasian was dispatched to Judea with a massive army to make an example of the Jews. His son Titus finished the job. He massacred many Jews, burnt Jerusalem to the ground, and destroyed the Second Temple, 656 years to the day after the fall of the first. The importance of Titus's victory over the Jews is evident from this coin and was eternally memorialized on the Ark of Titus, which exists to this day in Rome. It depicts the defeat of Jerusalem, the taking of slaves, and the looting of treasure from the temple, most importantly, the menorah. The last Jewish strongholds of Gamla and Masada were defeated shortly thereafter, but the Jews refused to surrender. In 115 CE, Jewish diaspora communities rebelled, but were again defeated. Then, 
Only 62 years after the fall of Jerusalem, the Jews in Judea rose up once more against the Roman Empire, again achieved brief independence. But this rebellion too was doomed to fail against the might of Rome. This time, the Jews were even more ferociously punished. 50 of their most important outposts and 985 of their most famous villages were razed to the ground. The number of those that perished by famine, disease and fire was past finding out. Thus nearly the whole of Judea was made desolate. In the aftermath of three revolts in three generations, Emperor Hadrian resolved to settle the problem of the province of Judea once and for all. He expelled most of the surviving Jews and banned Judaism. The city had been emptied of the Jewish nation and it suffered the total destruction of its ancient inhabitants. The emperor gave orders that they should not even see from a distance the land of their fathers. Hadrian rebuilt Jerusalem as a pagan Roman city, Aelia Capitolina. And finally, in an act that resonates until this day, he changed the name of the province from Judea to Syria Palestina. After all, victors write history. Once again, it seemed like the fate of the Jews was sealed. But finding refuge in the Galilee, a new leadership of rabbis replaced the lost kings and priests of the devastated Judea, and Jewish civilization was adapted to the reality of foreign rule. Though the rebuilding of Jerusalem remained firmly entrenched in the hearts of the Jewish people, the Galilee became the center of Jewish life. In the following centuries, some of the most important works of Jewish tradition would be created there. The Byzantine Empire emerged after pagan Rome officially adopted Christianity. In those days of early Christianity, religious anti-Semitism took form and the Jews were subjected to harsh persecution. In 630, the Byzantines massacred almost all of the Jews in Jerusalem, and once again, Jews were banished from the city. Byzantine control did not last long after the massacre. Only six years after the death of Muhammad, the Arabian armies of the Umayyad Caliphate defeated the Byzantine Empire, conquering and colonizing the entire Levant, including the land of Israel. For hundreds of years up to the 20th century, a succession of Muslim sultanates and caliphates would control the land of Israel with the exception of two centuries of crusader rule. Jewish life in Israel persisted and sometimes flourished under this long series of foreign empires in towns that still exist today, and most notably in these four cities. Throughout history, their numbers varied dramatically due to violence, war, and centuries of religious pressure that led to waves of conversions. At the same time, over a millennium of colonization brought in waves of different populations who became part of the local tapestry. All the while, for 1,900 years, the Jews lived as a colonized, frequently oppressed minority in their own land. The Jews are not alone. Other Middle Eastern indigenous peoples were also conquered and are persecuted and oppressed even today. Perhaps the most known are the Kurds. After centuries of oppression and a genocide at the hands of Saddam Hussein, the Kurds continued to fight for survival and self-determination, opposed by ultra-nationalist regimes in Iraq, Syria, Turkey, and Iran. The Assyrians are Aramaic-speaking Christians. Two-thirds of this small community were massacred by Ottoman Turkish troops. The Assyrians have been demanding independence since 1932, but today they're struggling for survival in chaotic Syria and Iraq. The tragedy of the Yazidis shocked the world in 2014. The Yazidis, neither Muslim nor Arab, suffered decades of persecution under Saddam Hussein before being targeted by ISIS. But the Jewish story stands out among other indigenous histories. The Jews are the only indigenous minority in the Middle East who succeeded in regaining their independence. And in this context, there is an attempt to erase the indigenous story of the Jews in the land of Israel and frame it as the exact opposite, a story of colonialism. Israel is a settler colonial society. This is a world of clashing narratives. To remain apolitical and distinguish claims from facts, scholars rely on archaeological findings and historical record. In the case of the Jewish story in Israel, these are called external sources. 
The earliest finding of the name Israel was written by Egyptian king Merneptah in his list of conquests. Israel is laid waste and his seed is not. King Hazael of Aram Damascus boasted of his victory over Judean king Ahaziahu of the house of David. I kill Ahaziahu of the house of David. Moabite king Mesha left behind an account of his wars with Omri, king of Israel. Omri was king of Israel. Assyrian king Shalmaneser III describes the army of the Israelite king Ahab, which he defeated. 20,000 chariots, 10,000 soldiers of Ahab the Israelite. In a later artifact, he itemizes the tribute he received from a later Israelite king, Yehu. The tribute of Yehu, son of Omri. The magnificent Lachish reliefs adorn the palace of Assyrian king Sennacherib. In 701 BCE, he destroyed most of Judea, including the city of Lachish. Sennacherib proudly reported, As for the king of Judea, Hezekiah, I shut him up like a caged bird in his royal city of Jerusalem. But the Assyrian Sennacherib didn't take Jerusalem. Babylonian Nebuchadnezzar did, and he recounts in his chronicle. The king of Babylon assembled his army. He laid siege to the city of Judah. He conquered the city and took the king prisoner. Coins from different periods of Jewish independence were unearthed in multiple places. And traces of continuous Jewish life are found everywhere across the land in places that carry ancient Hebrew names and ones that were continuously inhabited by Jews since ancient times. In many ways, Jewish connection to the land of Israel is one of the most documented stories in human history, regardless of political leanings. It is in fact only within modern politics that hostile political motivations are challenging what has been accepted as historical fact for centuries. Well, when, when was Jerusalem the capital? When was there something called a Jewish state? <laughs> Just like many other movements for self-determination, Zionism is the Jewish people's liberation movement, aiming to empower the historically powerless Jews as a free people in their indigenous homeland. The Zionist idea started captivating hearts and minds in the late 19th century, long before the rise of Nazi Germany, as a modern Jewish response to escalating oppression and ruthless violence suffered by Jews. The Ottoman Empire was defeated in World War I, and the British became the new rulers by a mandate from the League of Nations. In receiving the mandate, the British kept the imperialist name used by many conquerors since Roman times, Palestine. Two main populations lived under the British mandate of Palestine, Palestinian Arabs and Palestinian Jews. And so, for example, the Palestine Symphony Orchestra was a predecessor of the Israeli Philharmonic. The Anglo-Palestine Bank became the Israeli Bank Leumi, and this poster, often used today to undermine Jewish rights, was in fact a Zionist ad promoting tourism to the Jewish homeland in Palestine. When the time came and an independent Jewish state was founded in 1948, the Jews abandoned the colonial name Palestine, restoring the indigenous one, Israel. Some claim that stating these facts about Jews means denying the rights of Palestinians. This is false. There is no contradiction between supporting the rights of both communities and acknowledging the truth. Modern Israel is the first independent state in the land since the ancient Kingdom of Israel. Today, Israel's existence and prosperity represent a one-of-a-kind example of restorative justice. Israel's story is about a historically oppressed people, free again in their ancestral home, speaking the same language they did over 3,000 years ago. Those who deny Jewish history, identity, and rights in the name of the Palestinian cause are only fueling more conflict and suffering for both peoples. Despite their best efforts, there is no denying the truth. Jews are indigenous to Israel and have a remarkable story of justice, resilience, and hope. It is a story that has much to offer future generations of the Jewish people, and all people who are still fighting for their rights.